Empieza a entrar en modo partner. Infecting a city is a festival which asks people to really engage with, with matter of social importance and to, to make works which are not for an exclusive audience, um, which push artistic boundaries and which challenge people, but really that, that need to be able to be read by the, the person in the street. Looking at Cape Town, the social organism of Cape Town, where are the scars, who's been pushed out, what has been marginalized, what has been wounded, what needs to be celebrated, how do we create some sort of transformation? It's very easy to get absorbed into the mountain and the beauty of Cape Town, yet there is still this underlying emergency which is everywhere. We get to imagine whatever we want in art, isn't that fantastic? It doesn't have to be reality and it doesn't have to make sense. Because we yeah. expected a white Jesus with the white hands hair arm. and very tall. And then we saw a black Mighty man in a napkin <laughs> dancing his <laughs> so, but it was nice. The two biggest works on the festival came out of a residency in which we brought together seven artists from around the world to explore in depth the theme of the festival, Human Right, R-I-T-E. As a theatre maker, I really like to work with ritual, so I thought to, to really work with ritual and find see if there's a place for it in our society. And ritual as a form of celebrating, of transforming, cleaning, purging, healing, integrating people into a community, reaffirming community. These were the sort of things that attracted me. The Slave Lodge is located just across from, from the square. We've got the slave tree, which is where slaves were sold. You could kind of say that this is the beginning of slavery in South Africa. There are a lot of people that are not represented in this particular memorial. Those two guys, they represent the, the English and the Afrikaans. And during that war, they were just more than English and Afrikaans people. They were like a lot of black people and colored people. We decided that we should do some kind of uh, ritual to, uh, to remember those people that are not represented. This is an artwork that we as artists started, but we don't really control it, we don't censor it, we don't decide what it looks like. The public decides. We, ha we had no idea people would be so eager and excited and willing to share their thoughts, you know, and their innermost wishes. These, the two artists came and they really wanted to understand how streets and place names are given their names and what, what the politics of that is. And through the investigation, they came across this Khoisan um, Awareness Action Group who's really looking to create a platform for their voice, which has been wiped out for two, three hundred years. This is a herb garden of indigenous herbs. And the reason we're planting it here is because this is one of the sites um, that is allegedly a site of former execution and torture for not just the Khoi, but many people um, many, many years ago. We really felt that these spaces, it needs an element of healing um, and also to set the spirits at ease. We are making a mandala for healing. And what we are doing is we are using sand collected from places around Cape Town where human rights violations have taken place. So it will take us a week to create and after a week we will sweep it up and uh, throw the sand into the ocean. I, I, was, I was excited by the, the depth some of the works went to in, in really exploring the matter, um, in the, the, the growth in audiences. 
um, the way people are interacting with the, with the subject material, the way people are turned on, the way the festival has grown because there are more works out in the street that, that there are more places to be where you can bump into art. Um, and the, the, the infection of the city, I really see a strong growth for this festival in the next two years or so.